So they, in the recent years, there had been an increasing uh, amount of publications about research done with psychedelics and sometimes also with uh, the outcome of therapies with uh, psychedelics. But there is not much uh, published about how really to do therapy. And so far, besides the manual uh, of MAPS, there is nothing to guide you, that means to teach you how to um, do this work. So the basic requirements, uh, regardless whatever school or method you are wanting to learn in regard to psychotherapy, um, works with three uh, elements. That means first, intellectual input teaching reading, second practice, exercises, and third, self-experiences. In this case, self-experiences is ruled out. So, um, we have the situation that acceptance of therapy, uh, people, authorities who want uh, to discuss them, require standards. Standards, on the other hand, have to be developed by practice, exchange and communication. Practice, on the other hand, is not allowed because there are no standards. So we find ourselves in a loop, a logical loop. And there are so far two approaches to get out of this logical loop. One uh, is the training without using self-experience. There are a couple of examples uh, who follow this approach. Most known is the training of MAPS. Um, I've talked to Rick Doplin whether there is, they foresee that there is a change. What they can offer so far is that after completion of their training, they get the people into one session uh, the, the trainees into one session with uh, MDMA. The CIIS uh, in California offers a training too without any practical use of psychedelics in the training itself. The Swiss Association of uh, Psychoanalytic Therapy um, offers a training uh, since half a year in the proposal, they announced that they will include practical work, but uh, they applied for a permission, but this permission was uh, denied uh, a couple of weeks ago. So the result of this kind of training is that if trainees follow the law, they guide clients through experiences they never made themselves. That leads to the question, would you hire a mountain guide who never made it to the top? The solution could be, and I don't want to be uh, explicit, that uh, these kind of trainings suppress the practical work into the underground. That means that there is a, a, a public part and uh, underground part with the self-experience. Another way out of this loop is to do the whole training underground. Um, I want to talk about the benefits of self-experience. That means, for example, a deeper knowledge of the experience itself, personal development, healing the own dysfunctional behavior, avoiding to act out own patterns with clients, and I think that's very important, an increasing knowledge of the territory of psyche and soul, more connectivity to the clients because of reference to the experience, to the own experience, and get to know by practice the advantages and limitations of the method. So what could be a reason to exclude all that from a training besides the fact that the method is illegal? Is this, are you referring to 
just having a psychedelic experience, or are you referring to having a psychedelic experience embedded in psychotherapy? Yeah, embedded in psychotherapy. That's what I'm talking about. So besides the lack of benefits, I see a risk uh, of the absence of self-experience in a case, imagine that uh, psychedelics will become a prescribable um, medicine and may be prescribed by physicians who have no idea ab about the effects of psychedelics. It could happen or the risk is bigger that accidents may happen and that could lead to a rollback that people say, oh, no, 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 I think we, could, we should step back again. So the best way to get out to prevent this is first self-experience, but the best training could only partly replace self-experience if it doesn't include, <coughs> include the self-experience. And training, but even a lot of self-experience could only partly replace uh, a training. That means you need both self-experience and training. <coughs> so I want to uh, propose a model of a uh, training which is based upon one major assumption um, which those who know psychedelics a little bit more may, sh uh, may share. That, me, uh, that is that altered states of consciousness lead to an expanded perception that means pers um, a crossing boundaries of former limitations and that means in, in a result uh, that this leads to a transcending context. That means the model will start from a core and from this core in uh, several spheres transcend uh, boundaries we found or we, we are able to normally use in, in uh, trainings when we train therapists. So let's talk about the core, that's the trias of medicine set and setting. I don't want to go too much into detail because there has been much talked about, there had been quite some presentations. It's um, uh, so far um, mainstream knowledge in the psychedelic um, community. But you have to take into account that psychedelics are an instrument. That means only a good knowledge of the medicine and set and setting by themselves don't help you uh, to use it in therapy. It needs, there needs to be um, um, a kind of container in which you use this um, instrument. It could be any form of psychotherapy, regardless of what's cool. You need to have at least a basic knowledge or some training. And according to this model, I'm interested especially, or this, <coughs> this model implies uh, especially that you include into a training the teaching of approaches which include wider con context. That would be the first sphere of transcendence. That means, for example, pre- and perinatal psychology and psychotraumatology known best from Stan Groff, preconceptual traumatology, uh, of which William Emerson was a pioneer, or is a pioneer, transpersonal psycho psychology, that means in the end spirituality, then a systemical approach, which by definition uh, expands the individuum and goes beyond uh, to the position of the individuum in a uh, broader context. Especially helpful could be family constellation work, um, 
uh, in this um, um, regard. Then reference between systems, that means body, psyche, soul, body work would be very helpful and it's important to address the fact that transferences and projections are more perceived in these states. That means the therapists need to what Rumi would uh, call clear, clean their mirror from time to time. Then a sec in a second uh, step, you can transcend the Western concept of therapy by itself. That means the integration of indigenous or shamanic ways of healing. And when I say integration, I mean that it's something you add to what the Western tradition has developed. It's not, not, it's not meant that you replace it. So that means, for example, uh, that you get an understanding of how to create and hold a healing container, how to get uh, support and protection from the other world. It could um, contain shamanic techniques or tools, <coughs> that means ind indigenous technology. The integration of cosmology into the healing process, what in the result would lead to a spiritual approach. The integration of rituals into, healing pro into the healing process and the acceptance of even strange experiences for real instead of symbolizing them. So you can even uh, transcend one step further and look what would this mean for the method of training. Normal Western traditions train by uh, two um, um, approaches. First is teaching and reading, that means feeding, feeding the intellect, and second is practice, that means exercises. And here too, beyond, and I want to emphasize again, not instead, you can um, uh, ex expand or transcend this concept and include uh, a concept that you accept the medicine as a teacher. This will lead to a training where the teachers uh, do less teaching, but offer more suggestions, impulses, inputs and encourage the students to check and investigate and work through these impulses during sessions of psych uh, with psychedelics. I may give you an example when I started uh, psych uh, psychedelic therapy more than two decades ago. That was the same time when I was, uh, got familiar with the constellation work of Bert Hellinger. And I read a couple of books and found it interesting. Okay, I could, could be made sense. And then when I uh, went through sessions time and again, it, during several sessions, it repeatedly, I went through processes and in the end I realized, wow, that's exactly what this teaching tells. So I had an, uh, an own experience which confirmed the teachings which I have been reading before. So this, lead, this will lead to a deeper understanding and a more solid foundation of therapy. And that also makes clear one thing. This kind of training, if we understand it in this way, is not something that a teacher or teachers um, uh, teach uh, contents and the students take them and apply them, but there it's more offering a different approaches or different perspectives to look on things and then um, uh, the responsibility of the students to really go deep into and check what is true for them. And in the result, this will lead to the fact that in the end, there will not be one, uh, um, let me say, a main uh, outcome, 
all students are the same or have learned the same, but each and every student may have found its, per its personal, his or her personal um, approach how to work with um, psychedelics in a therapy. So the second um, transcending uh, or part of the Western concept of learning is uh, that you try to introduce um, ways to bypass the intellect. Um, for example, using rituals or using transmission. This can be very helpful because it, uh, if we have to put contents, input through our uh, intellect, it's far more slower than if we find a way bypassing the intellect. So what could be a possible structure of such a training? Uh, I will uh, uh, propose an, uh, a possibility, an outline. It could be either seven modules, seven days each, or eight modules, six days each. Less would be too little time to really uh, get a profound training. There could be one additional facultative module for uh, producing tools for those uh, who want or need them. There will be two or three sessions uh, using different psychedelics within each module and people have to uh, write proceedings and there will be sharing. Uh, there will be teaching, of course, practical use of methods which have been trained and e each module will have a specific topic. There will be a, a buddy system that means that during the whole training two students um, get closer to each other, they share their experiences, their development, their, their questions, their troubles um, in the time between the modules. That's a very helpful tool. There will be homework um, and after the completion of the training there will be um, uh, the possibility that the students work as assistants in sessions guided by the teachers. As often as it's necessary until they really uh, feel ready to practice on their own. That means there is not a fixed number of assistants, but it's, it depends on how quickly they get uh, done. And not all students at the same time, but in different sessions. The group will be 8 to 12 students. There will be two teachers, one male, one female as primary teachers and caretakers with a possibility to invite other teachers for specific topics. There will be supervision, one side individually like we know it from uh, uh, therapies um, by a teacher or an external specialist and there will be psychedelic groups open only for those who have uh, completed the training so that they can be used uh, as kind of uh, <coughs> supervision sessions. The completion of the training will have no examination but will need the presence with all modules and enough experience and there will be a final ritual. <laughs> um, I will now uh, give you a possibility of uh, uh, contents of different, of different modules in this uh, example seven modules. The first one addresses personal screening, uh, clearing the intention of the students, legal aspects, introduction of first tools. The second will address neurochemistry, psychopharmacology, medicine and the use of music in the session. The third will address set and setting and transference, counter-transference and projections. The fourth will address a systemical approach, constellation work, the effects of ancestors and how to work with them. 
The fifth one will uh, address a, a concept of healing. That means what do you understand uh, un, uh, of healing? A traumatology, pre-perinatal and pre-conceptual traumatology, body work, energy work. The sixth one will address a spiritual mapping. That means that the students may have an idea if they guide clients through transpersonal um, experiences where to place them or what could be at least a possible meaning or reference to. Um, con the concept of reincarnation and its consequences, shamanic and indigenous technology including access to helpers, the protection and the seventh would contain, uh, address the client, uh, interventions, preparation and integration of the experience. So I skip um, and go to the results. So a good training should result in a trainers, a trainees who are able to be of service, that's for me the most important to guide clients through a fundamental transformative process, to be emotionally sufficiently stable to expose themselves to very intense emotions in the course of the interaction with clients, to identify and to experience a state of open heart in the process, to gain a deeper understanding of different states of consciousness and of different ways to induce them to acquire the knowledge of specific effects of the different times of psychedelics, to plan, design and guide a session using this kind of psychedelics, to distinguish between the process of the client and their own concerns and transformation, to work with transference and counter-transference, to use different elements supporting deep trance healing processes such as music, singing, incense, light, touch, words or prayer or whatever else, to understand the shamanic and the psychotherapeutic approach, the difference between them and possible combinations, to place this work into a broader context of psychology, psychotraumatology, psychotherapy and different approaches of healing. To have acquired knowledge and skills in this process that can be used with clients even if you do not intend to work with psychedelics. To have acquired a deeper understanding of human interaction and to develop your individual approach and practice in this work to in, uh, integrate uh, and to integrate different tools. So I'm open to questions.